Hey everybody, welcome back to Vital Point. This is your host Andrew Penzi, and I have been on a quest for several years trying to get a razor sharp, shaving sharp edge on my knives, my broadheads, and my chisels. Thus far, I haven't been able to. So today we are trying a new system, the razor sharp edge making system. Really excited to try this, give it a true test, and we are gonna answer that burning question that you all know and love. Is it worth the money? Stay tuned and find out. Oh, excuse me, you just caught me shaving like I usually do. But you know, shaving with a dull knife isn't all that fun. Today we're gonna try to change that. Now I like to keep my knives pretty sharp, guys, but I'm very rarely able to get them shaving sharp. I could rarely shave hair with these guys. But they work pretty good for hunting situations, although a razor sharp edge would work that much better. So today I have an assortment of knives. I have some hunting knives I'm gonna try out. Some of them are serrated, steak knife, try those as well. And even a uh, fillet knife, which I find to be very tricky to uh, sharpen usually because it's so flexible it's hard to lay it down real flat and get a razor sharp edge so we're gonna try those out we're gonna try to sharpen the broad head uh, maybe a couple chisels and we're gonna put this system to the test I've been on a search for a couple of years now to find the ideal sharpening system I've heard good things about this one so let's give it a go Disclaimer, I am not paid in any way, shape, or form by Razor's Edge. I'm just a guy who likes to play with sharp things and I want to get them even sharper. The Razor Sharp system comes with two big paper wheels. One of them is slotted uh, and very fine. The other one has a silica carbide grit to it, as you see here. And this surface can be replaced occasionally. All you need to do is supply some Elmer's glue and they supply the silica carbide uh, grit right here. And there's instructions on how to do that. Additionally, it comes with some wax to lubricate the silica carbide and also some jeweler's rouge, white rouge, to rub over the slotted wheel. There's one essential item that this system does not come with that you must have in order to use it, and that is right here, a bench grinder. Uh, they recommend a six inch bench grinder minimum. This is an eight inch bench grinder. I think it'll work just fine. Ideally, you would have a bench grinder designated just for these wheels so that you don't have to take them on and off. I have the stone wheels on this one, but I'm gonna try this one for now. If I really like this system, I will end up making an investment to a new six inch bench grinder dedicated solely for this. The reason why you want it dedicated to this is when you mount these wheels on the bench grinder, sometimes if they're not perfectly centered, there might be a little wobble. Now you can take that wobble out by touching the edge with a little bit of uh, rough sandpaper as it's spinning and it'll just take that edge down ever so slightly. But you don't want to have to do that every time. Once you have it set and you know ready to go, you don't want to mess with it. Last time I checked, you can get a six inch bench grinder for as little as about 35 bucks. So it's not a big expenditure. Technically, according to the instructions, you need a grinder that spins at least 3,000 RPMs. They say you can get by with one that spins less than that, but it won't work as well. I do have an Amazon affiliate account, and I will put a link in the description to a bench grinder that is affordable and has good reviews on Amazon. Now you may ask, if I have a bench grinder with stone wheels on it already, why would I need a paper wheel? Well, the paper wheel will just get the blade that much finer, and it will get you to that razor edge. The current wheels I have on there, the fine one is about the same fineness as the coarse grinder that comes with a paper uh, razor edge wheel. The coarse blade on here is really only for taking a lot of meat off of the blade. For like my lawnmower blade, I'll use that. I put a new curvature on one of my hunting blades. The tip had rounded off, so I just sharpened that up using this coarse blade to take off some material, and then I honed it on the um, fine stone blade here. But again, like I said, it won't get razor, razor sharp. So now I'm gonna move to the paper wheels to get that extra fine tuning. As you can see from the sparks coming off, 
the stone wheels take off a lot of material. The instructions say to remove the guards off of your bench grinder, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. These guards are needed for stone wheels because sometimes on the stone little pieces can come flying off and you can get hurt. They say that does not happen with the paper wheels, so that's why you don't need the guards. I ran into my first problem. Uh, that's the arbor hole for this wheel currently has a half inch diameter, but there's this bushing here that converts it to five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna knock out the plastic and hopefully uh, it will fit on without the plastic with the five eighths inch hole. I drilled out a little hole in a piece of wood. This is a tapping block and let's try that. It's going on, it's just really snug and maybe it's supposed to be that snug because they don't want any wobble in here. Um, but all the more reason to get a designated bench grinder because getting this back off is going to be really hard. That ended up being no big deal to get the wheels on. They went on fine, they uh, fit perfect. Uh, a couple things to remember now. You never want the paper wheel to spin into the blade of the knife because it could catch and send your knife flying. You always want the wheel to come down uh, with the blade of the knife that way, never into the blade. Now I'm planning to sharpen it along the uh, front like this with the wheel going down. Some people actually reverse the grinder around and put it this way and then sh sharpen on the back side as it's going away from them that way. But I'm going to do it uh, from the front first and see how I like that. One thing about not having any guards that you got to watch uh, for a long knife such as this, when you're coming across, you could burn your arm pretty good if you uh, touch it on this side. So you got to be really careful about that. Directions say to take a little bit of this yellow wax and just get a little bit on the grinding wheel until you see some streaks of it on there. It said to be careful not to put too much. So I'm just going to touch it with a little bit. The wheels seem to spin pretty true. Uh, this one has a very slight wobble, but wobbles you don't really have to worry about. The main thing is if the surface is uh, just smooth when it spins, you don't want any bumps coming out. Coming straight out like this would be 90 degrees, and obviously we're not going to sharpen our knives that way. But half of that would be 45, and then half of 45 is 22 and a half. That you could just use as a gauge just to know about where you are. For most of my knives, I want them to be in the, you know, 18, 19 degrees for the real fine uh, knives here. And then for my hunting knives, you know, I think a 20 degree angle or so would be just right. I'm going to start off with this steak knife, which is very dull at the moment. I'll hit it on the course wheel just once on each time until I feel a burr forming. And then I'll come back over to the paper wheel and try it out on that. There we go. I always keep a little jar of water handy when I'm grinding just in case the blade starts getting hot. This really is not getting too hot and the paper wheels, generally speaking, are supposed to be fairly cool. If you do use the water, you want to wipe it off with a knife before you go back onto the paper because it is paper after all. Definitely takes a lot more pressure on here than it does on the stone wheel I had. The stone wheel would have taken a lot more material off by now. It's hard to hold it perfectly still, but I'm just doing the best I can here. Wow, that's getting pretty sharp. All right, I think I start to feel a little fine burr along the edge. I do feel it. This is getting crazy sharp, I gotta say. Now what it says to do is take a little jeweler's rouge and just touch it against the paper wheel. Just gonna, I'm going to true up the wheel and make sure it's um, perfectly square. Remember, never turn your blade into the wheel. You got, i got to keep reminding myself that. I could see the burr now. I could see it move just a little bit. And you want to just keep on going until that burr comes off. And it's coming off right there. Honestly, this is getting so scary sharp right now that like I'm afraid to even touch it with my hand. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's shaving, baby. I am shaving. Oh, sorry. I am definitely shaving. 
Holy cow, that is crazy. This is a historic moment. That was the first time ever that I've been able to get a knife razor sharp. It just took a couple minutes, as you saw, a handful of passes on this thing, and I am shaving, shaving sharp. It's insane. It's scary how sharp this edge is right now. Maintaining the appropriate amount of wax and rouge on the wheels helps with the heat buildup. You just have to be careful not to put too much. All right, old beat up steak knife, success, check. Let's try one of my hunting knives. This is the one I just reshaped the edge of, so it's pretty blunt right now. I'm finding it's definitely a little tricky holding the same angle along the whole time. You really have to concentrate on one, facing the knife the right way. Uh, you don't want this thing being a throwing knife thrown at you. And also, you really have to concentrate on maintaining the appropriate angle and keeping it there. It's real easy to kind of move up and down with the wheel. Uh, so you got to try to hold pretty steady and keep it across. But you know, the wheel spins so fast that I think it compensates. If you're up or down a little bit, I don't think it really matters because, I don't know, they're doing their job. <laughs> Just starting to feel that burr forming now. Now don't do as I do here, but I did just try something which I kind of like, is that I clamped a board down uh, in front of the grinder. And it's important to clamp this down real tight because you do not want this to fall into the grinder. That would be uh, an explosion uh, of epic proportions. But I tried that, so that way I could just glide my hand along the outside of it like that and it helps me hold the knife in the same spot and I think that little bit will really help in terms of me going up and down until I feel more steady maybe to do it without the board. It really starts to give the edge a mirror finish. I'm kind of curious if I just touch it against this part of the edge as well, if it'll uh, kind of give it that mirror finish as well. Yes, it does. It really polishes that edge. Hunting knife shaving sharp? Check. I'm not going to have any hair left on my arms by the time I'm done with this. But, uh, yeah, it just, it... Oh my god, I gotta get up to the camera. It's totally shaving. It's crazy. <laughs> my first two knives ever using this, I have shaving sharp knives. Pretty amazing. Took me a little longer than they said. They said you could do it in like 15, 20 seconds, I think. Uh, this one took me a few minutes for sure. It took a while to get a burr on this one. And then it took a lot of passes on that fine wheel to really get that burr off then uh, to where it's shaving. I kept seeing the burr go kind of back one side, back the other side, it was going back and forth. Finally, it took it off. I mean, it probably did, I don't know, 25 passes maybe on this uh, real fine wheel before I can get that off, but it did it. And you can see what, how it like polished up the knife pretty quickly too. And that's without me really spending any time doing it. Uh, so pretty cool there. Now you can see how two spots of the wheel are black and that's where it's rubbing the most. So that means it's not really rubbing evenly. So I am going to just touch the sandpaper to this and see if I could grind it down a little bit just to make it uh, perfectly even. I'm going to do a test with a pencil here and see if that worked. Let's see if the pencil covered the whole wheel. Uh, I think that worked well. I, I see the pencil, three pencil lines covered the entire wheel. So that was a good test. Next up is actually the trickiest knife of all, my fillet knife. I have a hard time getting fillet knives razor sharp. Let's keep sharpening, here we go. Ooh, that got hot. Feel that burr now. I'm gonna switch. Oh wow, 
wow, that's sharp, man. That is sharp. Ooh oh, man, look at that. That's sharp, man. That is crazy sharp. Woo! Hot diggy dog! That is a friggin' sharp fillet knife, man. Finally. Three for three, man. I am three for three. Look, this thing works. There's no question about it. After sharpening three knives, I do feel the coarse wheel has worn down quite a bit. Um, you know, I think in the book it said that this could last up to 200 knives. But, you know, I think that all depends on how sharp your knives are to begin with. If your knives are pretty sharp and they just need a touch-up, I think that's true. If your knives are pretty beat up and you're starting from scratch, uh, it, you know, you're going to wear this down pretty quick. That's another reason why it's good to have the two bench grinders, one with the stone wheels for those knives that are in real rough shape just to kind of get them close. And then you switch to these ones and they'll just bring it to that beautiful sharpness that everyone's looking for. Next up I have a knife with serrations on it. This is another hunting knife of mine that my uh, hunting buddies gave me. And this one is super sharp to begin with. Um, but it's not shaving sharp yet and I want to get it there and I'm gonna see if I could do the serrations as well when you're using the wheel with grit on it you only do the cut side for the serrations till you feel that burr then you're gonna switch it over to the other wheel and you do it on the both sides um, you have to hold it as flat as possible because the serrations are only cut one way that did it I feel the burr on the other side already that was all I needed. I'm not even going to touch the tip on this grit wheel because the tip is already sharp. I'm just going to fine tune it on the other wheel. Holding it very flat just to push the burr back over. Oh my gosh, it's, it's crazy sharp. <laughs> this thing is nuts. Hooey! Serrations, check! We are doing good. Every knife is looking good. I think it's time to try some broadheads. Before I mentioned that I read that some people like to sharpen, you know, turn this around and sharpen the knife on the back side with the wheel going away from them like that. I don't think I'd like to do that just because your hands and arms are too close to the wheel then. Uh, too easy to burn your arm on the wheel or something. I have both an iron wheel broadhead and a rage broadhead to test today. Two popular heads. Uh, these are both pretty chewed up. They've been through a few deer each and uh, into the ground. Who knows what else? And this one, I put black marker on it just so that I remember that it's a piece of crap blade. So um, I'm going to see if I can fix that now. We'll see. For both of these, I'm going to take the blades apart to sharpen them. Now I was trying to consider the best way to sharpen this thing. This is the iron wheel broadhead here. Um, I thought about maybe leaving it on the arrow, but you know, I can't do it with the bleeder blades on for sure because it's too easy for these bleeder blades to catch them up on this wheel and I don't want this thing thrown into my gut. So forget that. But also uh, when you do the opposite side, it'll just loosen on the arrow. You don't have any pressure. Uh, so I don't think it's gonna work out holding it on the arrow. So I'll have to try a different technique. Up until now, I've been using this little Stay Sharp sharpener. Uh, this thing is kind of handy. It's pretty inexpensive, but I literally spend hours trying to get my broadhead sharp. I go through lots of fine grit sandpaper trying to do it, and I have a hard time getting them razor sharp. I mean, I, I don't get them shaving sharp. So uh, this was handy, but it didn't get the broadheads where I wanted them to be. I was gonna use a set of these locking vice grips to hold the blades, but then I found this little small locking vice grip that I think will really be perfect. It holds the blade very secure and it'll allow me to get close and work without burning my fingers. I have a hard time knowing how much wax to put on here. I see some streaks on here, which I think are from the wax. It warns you not to put too much, but um, it's working so far, so I'll just keep on going. Yep, there it is. Now I might change this broadhead by a couple grains, I'm thinking. Um, something to think about, but it had to be done. Now I will say that it's kind of hard to get the angle perfectly aligned because it's such a small working area. But I think I got it. I should have done this and put these glasses on when I first started so I could see what I'm actually doing. Just for curiosity's sake, I am going to try to hold this. Uh, I'll get much better control. And actually that works the best. Yep, that's the way to do it. 
It really doesn't generate enough heat to burn your hands. And I should have done that from the beginning. You could feel much better where the angle is supposed to be when you're holding it with your hands too. Well, I've been working on this one for a while now and honestly I'm having a rough time with it. Uh, I ended up going back to the coarse grinding wheel to try to get that burr again because I just I was having a hard time getting it sharp. Um, I'm getting there, but it's much harder than the knives. I kind of wish I held it with my hands to begin with because I think I might have screwed it up a little bit trying to hold it with the pliers and getting the wrong angle down. I've actually reverted back to using some marker on the edge uh, just like you do with the work sharp one and some other sharpeners. It's a good trick just so that way you know exactly where you're hitting on the edge. I switched over to try the Rage just to see if that was any easier. The iron wheel is going to take some more work. But I just can't grab it far enough away from the tip really. Um, the pliers ends up hitting the wheel. I might need a real small pair of needle nose pliers. Maybe something like this might work. So let's try that. This is a pretty crappy pair of pliers, but it might do the trick. It's hard to hold it flat. It wants to move in the plier. Like I said, this isn't a great pair of pliers. It's a much thinner metal, so it gets hot fast. I do have a burr going there though. Alright, got, definitely got a burr on this one pretty quick. Let's try it on the paper wheel. I gotta keep dipping this one in water because it gets hot fast. It feels pretty sharp, let's see. Oh yeah, that's shaving. That worked, that worked. Maybe I could touch up the tip as well. Sharpening the tip was much more difficult than sharpening the main blades. I was able to make it pointy again, but really it was more rounded than angular. Recreating those angles was just near impossible. Next up is like a Montec type blade. Uh, let's see if this will work. I started sharpening the Montec and I decided I'm just not comfortable doing it because uh, when you're sharpening one blade, the other one is so close to the blade coming around and it's facing the wrong direction. That's exactly what they say not to do. So I didn't feel comfortable doing it. I was getting it sharper, but it's just not worth the risk. So I don't think this wheel is appropriate to use on this sort of uh, three blade solid type system. I'm back to the iron wheel and I'm gonna give it another shot and I'm actually using the work sharp holder just to hold the blade for me. I realize this is kind of cheating because I'm using a different sharpening system to use for this one, but it's worth a shot. Yep, that works. That works. That's sharp, baby. The 125 grain iron wheel broadhead lost about five grains in the sharpening process, but it's not completely unexpected considering I just didn't have a good system to hold the blades at first. It's a bit of a learning curve. Meanwhile, the 100 grain rage broadhead came down to about 96 and a half grains, which really isn't too bad considering how beat up those blades were. Lastly, I'm going to see what I can do with this chisel. I'm not going to try to sharpen this whole side because this thing is beat to crap. Um, as you can see, it's pretty worn out. For the chisel, you can see that mirror finish that it put on that edge, and it is definitely getting there. It's getting pretty close. Uh, this chisel is so beat up, though, that I just don't want to use all the carbide that's on this wheel in order to sharpen this. It's just not worth it to me. I think there are better tools to probably get your chisels close to razor sharp, and then you can use these wheels to bring it into that final shaving sharpness. So finally, we have reached an answer to my question. Is the razor sharp system worth the money? Guys, please give me a thumbs up if you like the video, enjoy the content. Like I said, you could purchase this system. It's on Amazon a great deal. Uh, there's an affiliate link in my description below. And you could also pick up a bench grinder through Amazon as well. Uh, please use the link, it'll help me out. Well, I would say for any of your knives, absolutely. This thing kicked butt on the knives, on the serrated knives, the fillet knife, everything. It made them shaving sharp 
and relatively quickly. This is my first time using this machine and I had each knife shaving sharp in about two minutes. For the broadheads, mm, the jewelry's still out. I think the key with the broadheads is being able to hold them flat and close to the uh, wheels without catching your finger. And actually this little work sharp tool worked very well just to hold the broadhead for me so that I can get it in there. Um, the Rage broadhead came out extremely sharp, shaving sharp. This one, the iron wheel eventually got there, but it was a long struggle to get it there. Uh, maybe the metal's a lot hotter on this too, that might have something to do with it, I don't know. But uh, I eventually got it sharp, it just was a lot more work. Um, I think I'd be quicker next time, I made a couple mistakes when I first started doing it. The multiple angles make it a little bit tricky, but like I said, if you can hold it flat and close to the wheels, you're golden. It'll work. The solid three blade type broadheads such as the Montec, I would not recommend. I think it's just too dangerous to use this fast spinning wheel on something like this that I could catch it and throw it. And for the chisels, this system will get them razor sharp. I think there are better tools to use just to get it close, but then this system will take it to that razor shaving sharp edge. I need a little touch up. Yeah, I don't think so. I wouldn't even try to shave with this thing. It is too sharp. Thanks for tuning in. I will catch you guys next time. This is Andrew Penzi, your host, signing out. Always aim for that vital point, guys. Catch you later.